Welcome once again to Leto's Law. Here's Steve Leto. Tim sent me a story from France, and it's a good one. The docs have won, the French court says. And by saying the docs have won, the court has said that they may continue quacking into the future as they have in the past. Stories from Reuters, the news agency, uh, from the town of Dax, which means, yes, we're talking about docs from Dax. And I hope it's pronounced Dax. With my luck, someone's going to say, Steve, it's not pronounced that way, but it's funnier if it is. <laughs> The ducks on a small French farm may carry on quacking, a French court ruled recently, rejecting a neighbor's complaint that the noise the birds were making was too much and was making their life miserable. The court in the town of Dax ruled that the noise from the flock of about 60 ducks and geese kept by a retired farmer in the foothills of the Pyrenees was within acceptable limits. And that was, of course, broadcast also on France 3 uh, being the original source of the story. So this is a very picturesque thing. you got a farm at the foothills of the Pyrenees in France, and there's a bunch of ducks and geese that live there, and a neighbor says, those ducks and geese make too much noise. I want you to make it stop. <laughs> the farmer told Reuters, the ducks have won. I'm very happy because I didn't want to slaughter my ducks. And that's, of course, the problem, is that if a court had ruled and said, yes, those ducks are too noisy... You can't tell them to be quiet. You can't gag them. So what you got to do then is either put them down or move them someplace else. Now, ducks and geese are capable of moving on their own, but they don't, you know, like they say, they don't come when they're called. Well, some of them don't. (laughs) The complaint was brought by the farmer's neighbor who moved to the area from the city a year ago into a property about 50 yards away from the enclosure where the ducks and geese are kept, and this is the problem. A farmer's got his farm and the stuff on his farm. Someone from the city who wants to get away from it all moves next door and immediately goes, hey, it's noisy here. Listen to those animals. Or I've also heard, hey, those farmers are using farm equipment late into the night. What's up with that? Or they're spraying stuff over there, and it smells funny. I don't like that. Never mind the fact that you've got to eat the food made by those farmers. Otherwise, you'll starve. And they've been doing that historically for centuries. And it wasn't a problem until you moved next door and decided to complain about it. The solution is not for them to stop what they've been doing. The solution is for you to have not moved there without thinking about it. If you want to move to the countryside, you're going to get the sounds and the looks of the country. And that might include things that happen in the countryside, such as ducks and geese quacking. So, the dispute is the latest in a series of court cases that have pitted the traditional way of life in rural France against the modern values which country dwellers say are creeping in from the city. In a court ruling in September, a rooster was allowed to continue crowing at dawn despite complaints from neighbors who had also moved in from the city. And it's good that we know the rooster's name is Maurice. (laughs) Because now we've got some guy in America making videos talking about a rooster named Maurice. Now, I will tell you that when I lived in Los Angeles going to law school, I had neighbors who kept roosters. Now, that's a little different because I'm living in a city. And every morning I got woken up by roosters that were being kept by neighbors who, for some odd reason, kept roosters. Uh, you know, but that was a temporary thing. I only went there for two years to go to law school, and then I moved out. The neighbors who filed the complaint about the ducks and geese at the foot of the Pyrenees uh, have not been publicly identified, which I suppose is good. And so what I'm wondering is whether this was a civil action like a lawsuit or more of a um, action being brought by the municipality, like a noise ordinance kind of thing. And that's a little unclear from this, and also I don't understand enough the French legal system to know. But like in America, if I sued you to get you to do something about your noisy animals, my name would be public. But if I went and filed a complaint with the city and said, hey, this noise ordinance is being violated, can you look into it? Me as the complainant, I might not be as easy to identify. The neighbor's lawyer said the noise exceeded permissible levels and prevented the plaintiff enjoying their garden or sleeping with their house windows open. The neighbors had asked for immediate steps to reduce the noise and for 3,500 euros in damages, according to French media reports. 
And so again, here's the thing. Um, geese and ducks appear to have been there when the neighbor got their property. So they, they came out, they inspected the property, I hope, looked around, negotiated a price. Yeah, we want to live here. And then they move in and immediately go, oh, but that stuff over there is too noisy for us, which was there presumably when they were house shopping. And, you know, I've spoken to people. Um, in fact, I was talking to my brother about this just minutes ago. And my brother is the furniture builder who's making me the bookshelves for my Oxford English Dictionaries. And he told me that he's had similar stories told to him up where he lives, north of me. But everyone has heard these stories before about people who live in the city and they want to chuck it all and they want to go live out in the country because they have this image of the country that is, you know, like out of a painting or something, you know, a Norman Rockwell painting. You know, I'm going to go out and live in the country and, 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 and you know, be on a porch swing drinking lemonade and, and talking to Gregory Peck. And, um, you know, the only thing I'm going to smell is, is the, the, the fresh spring air after a, a, a light rainstorm that, that stopped the moment the sun came up. And now as they look across the dewy lawn, and there might be a cow off in the distance, but he's, but he's or she's chewing very, very quietly. But the cow's got those spots like a Dalmatian dog, you know. And, and it's all very, very scenic and quiet and friendly and pretty. And, and in reality, don't get me wrong, that, that scene does exist someplace <laughs> in your head. But the scene might exist. But I've mentioned before I lived in Bad Axe, Michigan. And Bad Axe, Michigan is up in the thumb of Michigan. Heavily, heavily agricultural area. Uh, and you would drive th- you know, down the highway, M53, and you'd have just cornfields or you know, uh, bean fields or all kinds of just fields and fields of, of, of agriculture. And depending on time of the year it was, there'd be activity out there. And, and if they are harvesting, they might be harvesting you know, into the late hours. If they're spraying things or, or fertilizing or things, you might be able to smell that. Depends on which way the wind is blowing. Depends on how good your nose is. <laughs> Depends on how many miles you are from where they're spraying. But the point is, they've been doing that for decades upon decades and probably centuries. There's been farming happening there uh, and, and in France even longer. And so the idea that a city dweller woke up one morning and said, I want to go live in the country. And then wakes up on the first morning and goes, hey, those animals are making noise. Make them stop. <laughs> That's the problem. That's the problem. And, you know, no one wants to see how the sausage is made, right? Well, it's not quite that ugly to understand, but, but you know, there are places where they do eat ducks and geese. Uh, restaurants. <laughs> Everywhere. And, and the ducks and the geese come from somewhere. Okay, and so the point is that you move next door to somebody who keeps those animals. Those animals make noise. That's what they do. I can tell you right now, and I don't mean to malign pork. Um, I've eaten my fair share of pork, obviously. Um, (laughs) There are people who suggest that bacon can be added to almost anything. Um, But I'll tell you right now that that I was uh, riding on a bicycle trail over on the west side of the state of Michigan. And rode by a farm that had one of the strongest smells I've ever smelled in my entire life. Uh, and, and, and if smells were amplifiers, this was a Marshall stack turned up to 10 with your head pressed up against the speaker. I mean, that's, that's how strong the smell was. Three guys got that. And... <laughs> Riding the bicycles along and being downwind of these buildings in this farming area, got hit by the smell that was so strong, I can't describe it, and I wouldn't want to experience it again willfully, willingly. And I asked somebody, I said, what is that smell? And they go, oh, that's a pig farm. That's a pig farm. Now... I don't know if all pig farms smell like that. I I don't know if all pig farms smell. For all I know, pigs don't even smell. Arnold Ziffel appeared to be just fine around the house. (laughs) But 
if I was to go house hunting in the area and I saw a pig farm, okay, I would I would say to myself, oh, okay, number one, I eat bacon, so I understand that. But number two, I'd ask myself, maybe I should go downwind and check because winds do shift. They don't always come from the same direction. There might be prevailing wind, but not, not always. So if I'm upwind today, I could be downwind tomorrow. So maybe I should check to see if that industrial pig farm right here that I want to buy the pretty house next door to, maybe I should look into that. Maybe, maybe. But I would argue that if I bought the house next door to that operation and then woke up one morning and said, oh my gosh, that place stinks. They should stop that. (laughs) I'll admit that would be my fault. Okay. So the good news, like I said, is that in France, the, the birds are winning because Maurice the rooster and then the Pyrenees ducks and geese have both won in court. And that's the way it actually ought to be. So uh, I guess if you want a lesson, some people say, Steve, what's the lesson from today's video? The lesson from the video is if you are going to buy a house or go live someplace or even a building that you're going to rent, set up a business, look around it. Don't just walk your property and go, hey, this is a neat piece of property. Look who's next door. Look who's down the street. Smell to see who is upwind. Okay? And take those things into account because once you've bought something there, it's going to be hard for you to complain and say the people who were there before you need to leave because you moved in. That's how it works. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Anyone who says money can't buy happiness doesn't know where to shop.